LSU wide receiver Brian Thomas Jr. has been a popular choice amongst fans and draft pundits for the Indianapolis Colts at pick 15. Is Thomas the missing piece that would take the Colts offense to the next level? Let's talk about it. Welcome to the Horseshoe Huddle podcast presented by Fan Nation on SI.com, part of the Fans First Sports Network. My name is Andrew Moore, and as always, I'm joined here with my fellow analyst and co-host of the Horseshoe Huddle podcast, Drake Wally. Drake, Brian Thomas Jr. is one of the elite wide receivers in this draft class. You know, I think a top five uh, player at the position certainly had a fantastic season at LSU last year. And a lot of people out there think that Brian Thomas Jr. is a natural fit with the Indianapolis Colts at pick number 15. Yeah. And, you know, kind of like we did with Xavier Worthy, we're going to talk in depth about his fit with the Colts, what it could look like, where he could potentially fall, you know, kind of the drafting situation. But you're you're talking about a guy who's got the long build. He's got the tall 50-50 ball ability that, you know, um, an explosive offense needs. And, and you're also talking about a guy who led all of Division One in, in touchdowns with 17. And when you put into account, I can't remember if it's like 13 games, I think is what he played, but that's, that's a lot of touchdowns. Even, even by college standards, 17 for one receiver is very impressive. So I think that he brings a lot of very interesting things to a Shane Steichen led offense, but I'm very intrigued to just think about kind of similar to worthy, only a couple different things, how he fits with Anthony Richardson, because it seems like they both would fit each other's strengths just beautifully. It's going to be a fun conversation tonight as we really dive into the game of Brian Thomas Jr. We're going to talk about his strengths, his weaknesses, uh, the interests that we know the Colts have in Brian Thomas Jr. And, and we're going to give some predictions, you know, uh, if we think the Colts are going to take Brian Thomas there at that 15th pick. Let's look at the chat here as people roll in Truett saying, hey, man, if we get Thomas, another number 11 controversy because Brian Thomas Jr. in college wore number 11. Obviously, that's Michael Pittman. I don't think there's much conver- uh, controversy there, Truett, because uh, my, if Michael Pittman Jr. already had said he's not giving up that number 11 to anybody. But thanks for joining us. Yim is here. Uh, good to see you, buddy. We got Sean Contright in the chat as well. DSG Good Bar. We've got Christopher Jackson. Stats Matt, what's up? Time to talk our probable pick. So Stats Matt oh. thinks it's uh, probable that the Indianapolis Colts take uh, Brian Thomas Jr. So we're going to do a deep dive into the LSU prospect today. And if you haven't done so, please go follow us on all of our socials like horseshoe huddle on facebook follow at colts on fn on x and subscribe to the horseshoe huddle youtube channel hit that bell so you know when drake and i go live every monday and thursday night or for special breaking news episodes so you never miss us but if you can't catch us live or on youtube wherever you listen to podcasts make sure you subscribe give us a five-star review so we can reach other colts fans just like you and guys the draft less than a month away so make sure you pre-order order the indie draft guide uh i've done a ton of work on the draft guide today myself making sure that is ready for you guys here uh within the next week and a half or so uh make sure you pre-order use the link in our description and the code draftness gets you a dollar off and you get the draft guide for just 8.99 over 225 write-ups on the prospects and their fits with the colts it's it's definitely a must-have this draft season so make sure to go get your copy so drake let's dive right Right into it, buddy. LSU wide receiver Brian Thomas Jr., like I said, a lot of people are mocking him to the Indianapolis Colts at number 15, getting Anthony Richardson another weapon. You kind of mentioned it. He had quite a bit of he had really good production at LSU last season. Uh, and, and he fits a lot of what the Colts look for uh in their wide receivers athletically. So on, on paper, it certainly looks like it would be a really good match. Yeah, and I mean the his his combine profile lists him at six foot three, two hundred and ten pounds, two hundred and nine pounds, excuse me. Um, that's a big dude. You know, that's a very big receiver. That's a dense type of target. Now the thing is, um, especially with the way the Colts are are slotted to pick number fifteen is interesting, and and the people that are you know ranked in front of Thomas really stand out. I know his teammate Malik Neighbors, people like Roma Donzi, Marvin Harrison Jr., just a few names. Those are those are more realistically going to go top 10 
Okay. So I think that he's right. I think he's going to be right there. You know, I, I think that there's a chance that maybe a team takes him just a few picks before, but I don't see Thomas being in the top 10 or, or really even 11 or 12. I think that when the Colts pick, there's a real good chance he's just going to be sitting there. Yeah, well, let's take a look at at one of the very important things for the Indianapolis Colts, and that's an, the athletic profile uh, of oh, these players. So uh, to do that, I'm going to throw up his relative athletic score on the screen for you guys to be able to take a look at here. Uh, obviously, very athletic. Brian Thomas Jr. scored a 9.82 overall score out of 10. Uh just under six foot three, 209 pounds. You look here, a vertical of 38 and a half inches and a broad jump of 10 feet, six inches. Explosive, especially for a guy his size that, that, that close to six, three and 210 pounds. And then Drake, you look at the, the 40 times, you know, four, three, three, 40 yard dash incredible speed you know the the fastest wide receiver uh on the indianapolis colts as far as 40 times is concerned is alec pierce alec pierce at the combine ran a four four uh three uh or four four one excuse me at the combine uh the year he was drafted so brian thomas jr almost a tenth of a second faster also you got to look at that 10 yard split uh, from zero to 10 yards at just 1.52 seconds another elite time so you look at this raz this raz card uh for brian thomas jr elite athletic scores all the way around and and you know what that's probably makes chris ballard in this in this colts front office just salivate looking at the athletic profile of brian thomas jr and he he's able to use that type of frame very well to get up to speed very quickly like those numbers are really i'm glad that you broke into the 10 yard and 20 yard split because most of the time everybody really fantasizes over that 40 yard dash um it's really just a it's a glamour metric it's really not that important, man. It's just not. So um, the fact that he can get up to that kind of speed that quickly, be six foot three, six foot four, 210 pounds, have that type of explosiveness, that means that he could be a threat just to catch catch some short pass, uh, short passes too. He's not strictly just a downfield guy. The guy's got abilities to get those underneath balls, go, you know, just gobble up a whole bunch of targets like that. And then he's got the speed to get away from defenders very quickly. Basically, as soon as he gets the ball, he's immediately a threat. You saw it. He can cover 10 freaking yards in 1.4 some odd seconds. That's insanity. That means if you don't immediately have hands on the guy, he could just start running away from you right out of the gate so that is kind of like we said with xavier worthy man that's the definition of explosive and maybe he fits even better because he's probably got a little bit of a wider range of of, of catch radius his hands are big you know he's he's going to be one of those guys that can go up and as i mentioned earlier get the contested catches I just think he fits. He fits we're, really well. And we're going to talk about that because I think I've got a little bit of discrepancy with you on there on contested okay. catches. But but looking at the film, you know, he didn't he didn't run too many routes at at, at LSU, especially last season. Uh, he only he kind of ran a limited route tree, but I don't think that's going to be a problem for him in the NFL because I think he's got the ability to run uh, pretty much a full route tree. Want to give a shout out, of course, to the CFO, Patrick. Thank you so much, buddy, for the super chat. Patrick, our Already getting into it. it says no one is mocking Ju uh, thomas jr to the colts guys it's gonna be byron murphy duh so if you don't know what patrick is referencing uh nfl draft expert and i put that in air quotes uh matt miller uh, this 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 week came out with a seven round mock draft that had Byron Murphy, the defensive tackle for the uh Texas Longhorns, going to the Colts at number 15. Uh and the thing is, you know. With DeForest Buckner on contract for over twenty million, uh, you just signed Grover Stewart to a contract extension for three years and thirty nine million. Why in the hell would the Colts take a defensive tackle at fifteen overall? It just makes absolutely no sense. So that's that's a good one, Patrick. Really appreciate it, buddy. Uh, but then we've also got another super chat from Yim here. Thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, Yim says trade the second and third to get Bowers, then trade the fourth, fifth, and sixth uh, for all. All sevens and draft uh, and to get up to tw and draft 20 Zaire Franklins. Let's go. 20 Zaire Franklins. Uh, I mean, hey, tackling machines, maybe not the best in coverage, but tackling machines for sure. Yeah. And hey, if you got to give up a second and a third to get 
to get Bowers. If the Colts, if I'll, I'll, I'll say this, if they're sitting there, and I want to get your thoughts on this real quick. If they're sitting there, what do you think? Like 11, 12, like pick 12. Do you think that then they would try to make a trade happen? Like just to make sure that they get him? Or do you think they would just say no. if he comes to 15, he falls to 15? If, if he falls to 15, yes. But they're not going to trade up for, for Brock Bowers because while well, well, if you have the opportunity to draft Brock Bowers, if you're the Colts, you absolutely take it. However, they're comfortable enough with their tight end room that I don't think they are going to give up draft capital to go and get him. With with At, at that point, I still see probably a, a good amount of players uh, that they're going to really, really like on the board. But, but Yim, thank you Fair. so much for the super chat really do appreciate it and then i want to give a stats matt a shout out because he's got one killer stat here uh, i'm going to kick off this episode with a stat brian thomas jr was tied for third in epa that's expected points added when targeted in all of college uh, over all of college football with over 80 targets tied with malik neighbors his teammate at lsu who is considered a top five pick in this draft so that's a pretty telling stat that that when brian thomas jr was uh was targeted last year good things happened in that lsu offense that featured malik neighbors like we said and the heisman trophy winner Jaden daniels who is expected to be a top three pick in the nfl draft this year too so a loaded offense there in ellis at lsu for sure drake yeah, and you, it's it's not really a surprise to see that. Um, but I will say, Stats Matt, once again, coming in with the facts because that really starts to throw in the argument. Maybe it goes against what I said. Is there a chance that a team does think that Brian Thomas Jr. is the next guy to take their offense to the next level and pick him in the top 10? Who the hell knows? He's had a very impressive draft cycle, yep. and, and it really wouldn't surprise me if Brian Thomas Jr. wasn't there at 15. There's been a lot of teams very impressive, impressed with what he's been able to do and, and how he translates to the NFL. Let's go over his stats real quick, Drake. Uh, obviously, college production isn't everything, uh, but I do think it's important to at least mention and show that going up against high-level defenses in the SEC, Brian Thomas Jr. was able to shine and produce week in and week out so last season 68 catches uh about 1177 yards which ranked 13th in the nation uh in, in receiving yards and then like you mentioned earlier drake 17 receiving touchdowns led all of of the fbs last season uh he was a third team all american second team all sec and then a blitnikoff award semifinalist, which is the award for the best wide receiver in the country not bad not bad at all for Brian Thomas Jr. And then overall in his three years at LSU, uh, 127 catches, 1,897 receiving yards, 24 touchdowns. So uh, really uh, looking at those stats, obviously he didn't really come on the scene until last season. He was buried on the depth chart uh, the, because it seems like LSU every single year is just churning out NFL wide receivers. But boy, when he finally got his chance and got his opportunity there in that LSU offense, Drake, he flourished last season and was one of the most dominant and, and scary pass catchers in it in, in all of college football really yeah and uh, one of the things that really stands out is the the 1177 receiving yards on 68 catches that's almost uh 17 and a half uh, re receiving yards per catch that's absolutely fantastic mm -hmm. you talk about that kind of average that just opens up everything for your offense i mean it probably helps to have malik neighbors on the same team and Jaden daniels throwing you the football but um, at the end of the day, you know, obviously 21, 22 didn't really have much. I think he had a total of like 50, 59 catches for like seven touchdowns. But like you said, once he was given that opportunity and all of those starting snaps, all he did was show out and all he did was lead the entire nation in touchdowns. That's got to that's gotta at least warrant some kind of thinking from the Colts. Like, you know, if he's available and maybe it's him and one other guy that we really like, would they just take him because of the fit that he has and just how much, I mean, we can't emphasize enough people explosive. That word has been uttered by Ballard and Steichen so much that they're going to go that route in the draft one way or the other. They're going to get a guy where you go. Yeah. He's an incredibly explosive player. And Brian Thomas is one of a few that we'll probably talk about uh, by the end of all of this that fit the bill.
Yeah, I, I would agree. And and the Colts have definitely shown interest in Brian Thomas Jr. throughout oh, yeah. this draft cycle. Like this isn't made up, guys. Uh just just yesterday at his pro day, our colleague Rashad McGinnis was was at the LSU Pro Day. And the guys that were in attendance for the Indianapolis Colts, Reggie Wayne, the wide receiver coach, and Jamie Moore, the assistant director of college scouting for the Indianapolis Colts. So it's not Shane Steichen or Jim Bob Cooter, who, by the way, Jim Bob Cooter was up in Washington today uh, for their pro day. Uh Possibly may, maybe talking to Roma Donzi, even though Roma Donzi didn't uh, didn't work out. But if Roma Donzi does fall, obviously I think the Colts would be pretty high on him. Oh, Jalen yeah. Jalen Polk, another wide receiver. But but I digress. I mean, Reggie Wayne has been to three pro days so far this year that I know of. LSU for Brian Thomas Jr., Texas for Xavier Worthy and and Adonai Mitchell, and then Oregon for Troy Franklin. So. I mean, the, the top wide receivers that the Colts are, are that would fit the Colts in, in my opinion, Reggie Wayne is going to all these pro days. So if that doesn't tell you that the interest in Brian Thomas Jr. is high for the Indianapolis Colts, I think you need to open your eyes a little bit. Yeah. And we did just have our episode on Xavier Worthy. Now, they did have Shane Steichen and Jim Bob Cooter go to, and, and I can't, who else did, did they have Ballard? Ballard didn't go to that one, did he? he no, ba Ballard. Ballard doesn't he really doesn't, yeah. travel to the pro days. He really has it in quite some time. He he wasn't there for for Anthony Richardson's pro day. Most of the time, Ballard can get everything that he needs from the tape. Uh, we still haven't really seen Morocco Brown on the trail yeah. yet, and that's that's who, what, what was the big giveaway to me uh, for Anthony Richardson last year was Morocco Brown there. But it's uh, usually Ballard. I don't think in, in, since the pandemic, I don't think Ballard has gone to to any pro days well that what i was going to say is i think that they sent more to the texas pro day because while I, I you and i are both on this this uh um you know thinking that it's definitely xavier worthy that they had eyes for but potentially ad mitchell too because ad mitchell did impress he did look really good um and he's looked good throughout this draft cycle but don't short come reggie wayne i mean you're talking about a guy who has in my humble opinion he's done great work in, in his short time as a wide receivers coach for the Colts, You're talking about a guy who had to inherit what he did last season. And then he turns Josh Downs into a, a legitimate threat in the slot, pounded the table, got the guy. And he's done a great job with these receivers. And, and like Michael Pittman Jr., all his stats have done since Wayne took over wide receiver coaching is just go up. OK, Reggie Wayne's doing something right, is my point. And so I, I think that the fact that he is there is huge. I think that that still means that Xavier Worthy is just as much in play as Brian Thomas Jr. I, I just think that they that the Colts might have been looking at an additional receiver at the Texas Pro Day. That's why you saw more. So if Reggie Wayne's there, take notice because he pounded that table and got Ballard to take downs. Do not put it past him to go after a guy like this, too. They again, they need explosive players. They need guys who can take attention away from Pittman because he's not going to be able to just hog all the targets forever. Eventually, defenses will catch up to that. Reggie Wayne, I think as the years have gone on since he became the wide receiver coach for the Colts, you know, his his voice is holding more weight in the building. You know, as as he's been gaining experience and working with these guys longer, he's he's not more he's not just a position coach anymore. You know, the 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 Colts really took his his word for granted last year when he pounded the table for Josh Downs. They went out and got Josh Downs, and, and it turned out to be to be a really good move. I think Shane Steichen really trusts Reggie Wayne as well, and, and really really trusts and respects his opinion and his expertise at the wide receiver position. Of course, when you have a, a Hall of Fame caliber receiver that's been there, done that in the league, and now he's just he's continuing to grow as a wide receiver coach. Of course, you want to take that into account. So so. Reggie Wayne were the places that he has gone. That's what I've been really taking stock into. We'll see if it amounts to anything and we'll see if the Colts do take a wide receiver from one of these schools. But if it does, if they do, it just, again, it reinforces Reggie Wayne's voice in this process. So let's talk about the strengths of Brian Thomas Jr. Drake. Cause I like, I I've watched, I, over these past couple of days, I've, I've, I mean, I've watched a couple of, of the games from Brian Thomas Jr. But over these past couple of days, I watched, I tried to watch as much film on Brian Thomas Jr. as I could. Uh, really watched every single one of, of, of his targets from 2023. And obviously, the thing that stood out to me right away, 
home run speed. You know, the four three three forty is is out there, but that speed shows up on tape. I mean, the way he closes in on defensive backs and is really able to to put them in a bind. And then once he gets a step on a defensive back, it's like, good night. I mean, that defensive back isn't going to show up. Obviously he has really good hands. In my opinion, uh, has a pretty low drop percentage. I think around five or 6%, really not really. That's and in the, that in the NFL, that's a good drop percentage. So good hands, fantastic release. Uh, because, and, and when I talk about release, I mean, with a guy of that speed, you know, you're probably thinking, oh, he's just going to try to get out of the blocks as quickly as he can and, and and really try to create ground. But that's not Brian Thomas Jr.'s Jr.'s game. You know, he takes time with his release. He he changes up the tempo. He's not flying out of the blocks as soon as the ball snapped at 100 miles per hour. Sometimes he'll go slower. Sometimes he will attack a defensive back like that, but he keeps the defensive back on his toes, which I think is really good because when you get to the NFL – you're you're not just going to be able to blow by those guys with 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 pure speed you know they're too good for that they're going to be able to get their their hands on you there's going to be a lot more press coverage so you have to you have to kind of use different different techniques you can't just do the same release every single time you have to vary those you know between uh, like a couple of stutter steps or or really shooting out of the block and it's not just on the same route as well so i thought that was really good obviously we talked about the production 17 touchdowns uh, a season ago drake uh i mean you you can't ignore that type of production and and he was doing it against sec level defenses which is some of the best defenses in the entire nfl and and, and the thing that that i think to me was was sneaky good I, I put down in my notes his route running so again his this kind of piggybacks off of his release a lot of times with 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 wide receivers of that speed you don't see them as nuanced route runners you know they just try to use their speed to get away from defenders brian thomas jr didn't did he he did that but he also was a really good route runner what i mean by route runner is he he used positioning to gain leverage on defensive backs which is something you're going to have to do at the next level and i still think he can improve on his route running you know a lot of times he would he would get his lower body involved and he'd take a jab step to to kind of uh get defenders off their spot but i think he can do even better and and use kind of his upper body you know get a shoulder into a guy use a little bit of a head fake like you're going one way before you break the other didn't see too much of that from brian thomas junior but if he can add that to his route running repertoire oh baby you know he's he's going to be even he's going to be even better than than what we think and and he ha- he could run short routes i've seen him go over the middle obviously he's a deep ball threat so this guy isn't limited to just streaking down the field as a burner he can certainly do that, but he can work over the middle. He can do quick hooks. Uh, he's he's a threat after the catch, which is not the case a lot of times when you're you're that big. So for a guy that only has really one big season of production, he's pretty well rounded in what he can do as a as an X or a Z wide receiver. There's definitely th- some things he can work on. What we'll talk about here, but there's a lot to like and and those a lot of those strengths that i talked just talked about with brian thomas jr they really translate over to the next level yeah and look at the end of the day you need like i know that i, I oh, my bad i actually like took alec pierce's profile from his nfl combine and put it next to uh brian thomas jr there's a lot of similarities but here's the thing and it's it's my general thinking is that Yes, they are similar in many ways, but I do think that Brian Thomas Jr. is a better prospect than what Alec Pierce was. Okay, I I think that there's a lot more upside there. Um, But like you said, a couple things here just from his combine is he's able to bend the hips and sit in the chair at route breaks. These are strengths here. Short area shake helps uncover for quick hitters underneath, Mm -hmm. which for a guy that's bigger. Look, if if a guy that's bigger like that, that's like 6'3", 210 pounds, is catching two or three yards slants, and right out of the gate, you as a linebacker or a defensive back have to already try to tackle this guy, and he's got that kind of speed, that really gives you issues because his true strengths are over the top, deep balls, you know, being a big play weapon. It's like Andrew said, he's got that versatility. He's got that ability to be way more than just a vertical threat. But going right back to that, 
The straight line speed takes him into top position on go routes. So it puts him in the best position to win. Length and burst to run down and secure potential overthrows. Outstanding ball tracker who can bring it in over his shoulder. And of course, lastly, but not the least, he led the nation with 17 receiving scores at a pace of one every four catches. That is the definition of explosive, and he can do other things as well that are a little bit more paced, like the short route running, the short catches. He can do a lot. He's a great player, well-rounded, and he fits the Colts' offense perfectly. So if they take him, Andrew, they're getting themselves about exactly what they need to be more explosive. And I think those strengths can even get better, you know, Drake, like I said, yeah. I mean, you, you're talking about that the route running, like I mentioned, uh, well, he has good hands. This is kind of some of the weaknesses I saw, but he had a lot of body catches, you know, he, there was a lot of times where instead of him going and attacking the ball, he kind of let the body, the, the ball come into his body, which was fine. I mean, I do you, 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 he didn't drop too many of those, but I think he would have had a better success rate if he, if he becomes more of a hands catcher and he's certainly going to have to do that in the nfl because if if yes. not you're going to have those skilled dbs that will get their hands in there knock that ball out so you need to really be able to go and attack the football um something that you said which which to me didn't really stand out on tape to me was was the contesting was his ability to go up and win those contested catches to me i think that's something that he still needs to work work at you know he's got the, the physical profile he's six foot three 210 pounds at 38 39 inch vertical he has all the physical tools to to be a good contested catch ball winner but I didn't see too much of that on tape. A lot of the stuff that I saw on tape was his catches when he was running away from people, but he did, and, and he did make some contentious catches. I don't want to say there isn't any on his film, but for a guy that size, you want him to be a, you want him to be better at the catch point, especially when you have guys in your face, you're going to have more aggressive DBs at the next level. Definitely something that, that he needs to work on. And I think that's a big difference between him and say Alec Pierce on the Colts. You know, Alec Pierce is one of the best contested catcher, if not the, the best contested catcher on the team. You know, he can jump out of the gym. He's got that ball, that basketball and volleyball background. I think his Alec Pierce's vertical was, was, 41 inches something something absurd like that but i mean you just think of the, the throw that anthony richardson put on him when he had aaron donald draped all over him and richardson put it on a rope alec pierce skied up and got that he's done that multiple times in his in his short career with the colts that's an area that i think brian thomas jr can can certainly work on you know definitely a better route runner than than alec pierce faster than alec pierce but i think alec pierce probably has him in that contested catch game as of right now and then finally I, again just needs to be more physical throughout the route and i think that will come uh, uh it's especially when he adjusts to the nfl game a lot of defensive backs in college love to play five, 10 yards back. Uh, those wide receivers don't really face too much press coverage in, in college. Be, number one, because those defensive backs have to respect Brian Thomas Jr. speed. And I think that will still translate over to the NFL because they'll still need to respect his speed because if they just try to jam him on every play, eventually he's going to learn how to get out of that and he's going to get by. And as soon as he, like I said, as soon as he gets a step on you, good luck trying to catch back up because you're not going to do it. But yeah, he's just going to need to learn how to become more physical throughout that route because NFL DBs are going to try to knock him off his spot. And if he is doesn't learn how to be physical and and, and and kind of learn to not allow them to do that that's what defensive backs are going to do all day to try to get him off his spot break get him out of rhythm and then he's he won't be as big of a factor so a lot of the stuff that i saw with brian thomas jr is just being more physical you know and and fighting through that physicality and i think once he gets into an nfl weight room strength and conditioning program he's going to add some muscle you know he's going to get used to that uh in the nfl game and if he can do that then i think those strength those those weaknesses really really won't be weaknesses for very long so it, it, totally totally understand like where you're coming from i just 
I, I was curious to ask you this, actually. What do you think it is? So you think it's mostly that he just doesn't power through the catches for the contested catches? Or, like, what do you think, like, limits yeah. Brian Thomas? Does he assume it's going to happen? Or Yeah, I, I think a lot of times, I mean, he just lets the defensive back get into him, you know? Uh, there's a lot of times where where when he goes up for a contested catch, the, the defensive back is right there, and, and he just can't come down with the football. You know, it's not like he j- goes up to get those catches and he drops opposite he's just not using his leverage enough and not using his big his big body to kind of out muscle the defensive back he lets the defensive back get into him too much and and again i think within a, an nfl strength and conditioning program and as he gets gets used to the nfl game that will probably change you're going you'll see him become a more physical receiver that's just part of growing up and, and becoming a professional athlete you know and granted I, he, it could be that that's not a strength of his game because he didn't have to do it too much at LSU too. You know, yeah. when, when, when you're, it, it becomes different when that's something you have to learn how to do because the defensive backs are all over you. A lot of times in college, the, the defensive backs couldn't hardly catch up or handle Brian Thomas jr. When watching the film last year. So I think, I think a lot of it is just uh, again not not enough opportunities. Uh, definitely needs to probably put on some 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 mass and and some more lean muscle as well uh, to be just be more physical. And then having I mean having that 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 attitude that when you go up for a ball, kind of have that dog in you. And I think that's being around a guy like Reggie Wayne and Michael Pittman Jr. would certainly help. Having that dog in you that like see ball, get ball. No one else is getting this ball but me. So I think I think all of those things are is stuff that Brian Thomas Jr. can can learn and 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 implement into his game. It's just I mean, if he was a perfect prospect, he'd be going in the top five. You know, there's things he's going to need to work at, but the tools are there for him to be a good contested catch wide receiver. Yeah. And, you know, uh, playing right into exactly what you just mentioned, by the way, maestro work, as always, from Andrew Moore. Stop. Um, <laughs> the man knows football, damn it. So uh, might need to ramp up physicality against clingy coverage. Okay. Mm-hmm. There are defensive backs that even if they are smaller than you they are so damn good in the nfl they will still press you they will still challenge defensive backs are far different than they are in college look i'll even go back to anthony richardson's incredible run against lsu those guys were bouncing off of him like bullets off a freaking superman okay you saw what happened in the nfl when richardson didn't take it seriously and what could happen guys are just bigger faster and stronger at the end of the day in the nfl so Thomas is going to have to adjust to that. And I like what you said. He might put on just a little bit of mass, but he can also um, battle the occasional focus drops. That's actually one that I agree with you on and disagree with the NFL pro, uh, draft profile. I think that he – it's not even focus drops. I just think that sometimes when you have a receiver that is a deep threat and they excel the most at, at really being that big, huge gain type of guy, averaging 17, 18 yards a catch – People can get on them a little too hard for drops. I mean, a lot of those are vertical passes. A lot of those are going to be those contested passes, okay? So Alec Pierce caught like 50% of his targets last season, okay? It's because a lot of those were contested balls, downfield throws and whatnot. So uh, plus he was with a quarterback that didn't work out. So I, I, I just – the weaknesses, I think, that they, they fit. But like you said, Andrew, and I like that you mentioned, you know, if he was perfect, he'd be in the top five. If he was a Marvin Harrison Jr., he'd be in the top five. But all the tools are there. There are going to be those obstacles like, you know, potentially getting out muscled, maybe not the most extensive route tree, but the route running is there. There's just things you're going to have to work out, and you have Reggie Wayne to do that. Okay, he helped do it with downs. I promise you downs is going to be a weapon, and it's a a big part of that's because of the coaching Wayne's going to provide. So I think that those weaknesses, I'm cool with those if you are. (laughs) You know, if if Brian Thomas is there and I'm picking him, far more upside – uh, then there are the weaknesses to consider. So I think that it's a good fit. Now, taking those strengths and weaknesses into account, his fit with the Colts. Drake, you, you said you think he's a good fit. Obviously, I think when you when you talk about his fit with Anthony Richardson, the, the it's obvious to see a deep threat, a guy that can can really add explosiveness to this offense. So if the Colts were to draft Brian Thomas Jr., you know, talk about that fit. What makes him dive in a little deeper what makes him a good fit and and what his role would be you know does he supplant 
Alec Pierce as the as the starting Z wide receiver, or is it more? Does it end up being, in your opinion, would it be like a 50-50 split? Just just kind of tell me what if the Colts draft Brian Thomas Jr. What what do you envision him being? Just in his rookie year, obviously, if you're taking him at 15, you're you're expecting him to be a, a starter and and one of your top receivers down the line. But what would you expect out of him that rookie year? Man. Eh. If if he's taking 15, okay, it's kind of like what we said with Xavier Worthy. You're not going to – I wouldn't expect him to start out right because this is not a Josh Downs and Isaiah McKenzie situation. All right, you're talking about him competing with Alec Pierce, and Alec Pierce has had a lot of volati- volatility with his career as far as quarterback rotation and stuff. So I think the Colts love Alec Pierce. I really do. I think that they still want to give him a shot. But I think that you're at the start looking at your wide receiver four. You know, you're definitely looking at your wide receiver four. I think that he's more of the outside guy. Um, do you potentially bring in another wide receiver in the draft later in the rounds? Because remember, this is a deep class to solidify the slot role. I do think that you could probably put Thomas Jr. in the slot just because he's so freaking explosive and athletic. There he were could... a few plays where he was inside, but I think it was close to like 80% of his routes were outside. So he's a yeah. standard X and Z wide receiver. Yeah, so that that really cements it even further that I think you would just have him start out as a wide receiver four, unless he just blows Alec Pierce out of the water in camp. If he just looks, if he if 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 Shane Steichen and Jim Bob Cooter and all those guys are saying Wow, the, the, he is just—he's just, he's just a, a a perfect fit here, and he's just taking off. And Alec Pierce is just a little bit behind. They they may go that route, um, but I think the more realistic thing is if he does get playing time, it might be more towards after a couple games. I just think that I think that they're going to have Jelani Woods back. You know, hopefully, the tight ends are going to be used a lot more. You still have Richardson. You know, you're going to have Evan Hall back. Um, potentially another running back in the draft. You got Taylor. Pittman and Downs are still going to eat up most of the targets, and Pierce, I think, is still going to be that deep threat and will fit better with Richardson. I just think that at first, Thomas is going to sit behind Pierce, but then maybe later on he'll get integrated more into the offense. I just don't think it's going to happen right out of the gate like a top-five pick. Okay, and I can respect that. I I think... I, I think I'm going to go a little bit more towards the Brian Thomas Jr. side of things as far as Ooh. in role because right. I think – I, I don't necessarily think it would be like this is Alec Pierce's job and and you got to go out and 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 like take it from him. Obviously, it's the other way wet or other way around, dude. I I don't I don't even think that. I think it's going to be a serious open competition. You know, if they did take Brian Thomas Jr. and Alec Pierce, because you know Alec Pierce hasn't. Done, it's I mean. You can you can say that he he wasn't with a quarterback that really fit his skill set, and that definitely plays a role. But the thing is, Alec Pierce hasn't done enough. You know, he's not a Michael Pittman Jr. that has been this team's top wide receiver for year after year and and proven that he can produce. You know, he hasn't done enough to just say you know he he's earned that starting spot and and he should he should stay at that you know i think it's a it's a complete open competition because again we're going into year three with alec pierce you can't wait forever you know if it's if he's going to show out he needs to start showing it right now so i think it's an open competition all throughout the spring all throughout training camp uh who is able to produce the best who's able to to open up this offense the most uh and and who has the the better camaraderie and the better connection with anthony richardson again it's all about anthony richardson we can't we can't not forget that you know you cannot forget that so when when you're talking about that and you're taking a wide receiver at 15 you know he's expected to have a big role so going into the season i think it's open i think eventually just because i because of what brian thomas brings he's still he's the deep threat like alec pierce but he can do a lot more underneath something i didn't even mention which is one of alec pierce's strong points is his blocking Brian Thomas Jr. is a pretty damn good blocking wide receiver as well. So it's not like I'm sure Alec Pierce definitely has him in that category, but but Brian Thomas Jr. is not that far behind. So I think it's an open competition. Eventually, I, I don't. I think it would potentially start where the snaps are kind of are, are pr- pretty close. 
But I just think that that what Brian Thomas Jr. brings to this offense is more than Alec Pierce can bring. Doesn't doesn't necessarily mean Alec Pierce is going to be riding the bench and only getting 15 snaps a game. I think the Colts would like to have more variability with their wide receivers. So I think Alec Pierce would still come in, especially on those rundowns as a blocking wide receiver, uh, especially when they need some juice. I mean, hell, you want to you want to talk about juice? Put Brian Thomas Jr. on out wide on one side, Alec Pierce out wide on the other. You put uh Pittman in the in the slot or if Pittman needs a break you put downs in the slot you got you got potent options there especially with that that first one where I where Pittman in the slot that's deadly uh that's some you could have two guys going deep Pittman controlling the middle of Jelani Woods doing something then you have to account for Anthony Richardson and Jonathan Taylor in the backfield I mean good luck to defensive coordinators if if that ends up being the case Drake but I really think it's closer than people think and the way, just the amount of resources that the Colts have been putting into looking at these young wide receivers and not just like, not just wide receivers that they're going to take later in the draft, wide receiver prospects that are first round prospects. I mean, that tell, in, in my opinion, that tells me everything I need to know that Alec Pierce's job is isn't safe you know and they are bringing a guy in that's that's going to be a top level draft pick and putting him right up there with Alec Pierce and it's going to be an open competition from the minute that kid is drafted this spring yeah and you know another guy um that that is a pretty good deep threat can block pretty well at times um you're always waiting for him to take that next step is Ashton Doolin you know, and I, and I think that he's he's had a little bit more of the limelight because he's just so damn good at special teams. But could Alec Pierce be the next Ashton Doolin as far as a wide receiver on the Colts? Could he fall to that wide receiver for? Um, I like your points. I did want to highlight one comment here from Rahul. Um, what, in your opinion, separates BTJ – oh, uh, 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 Brian Thomas Jr. or Worthy from uh, A.D. Mitchell. I think Mitchell has the potential to be a wide receiver one but feels a bit forgotten about – amongst Colts fans. So I'll let Andrew elaborate a little more on this, but just because in our last episode, he kind of broke down why worthy might be better than AD Mitchell. Um, but I think that I just think that for, for Brian Thomas jr. In short, for me, it's just the explosive factor mixed with the fact that he can do more than just be a downfield threat. And then for worthy worthy has top flight speed, but I think he, fans overlook him a little bit because of the John Ross syndrome far more to offer than John than John Ross had to offer coming into the NFL Xavier worthy has got the top flight speed he's also got big play ability he's got the ability to strength catch and pull down balls at five foot ten he's got slot appeal he's got outside appeal very a couple of very well-rounded guys and I think that ad Mitchell's well-rounded but um, I just don't think maybe on the same level. What about you? Yeah, and and we're gonna that's this is what Monday's episode is gonna be about. Plot twist or uh, spoiler alert, guys. We're gonna do uh, Ad Mitchell on on Monday, <laughs> but but to me, I think the reason Ad Mitchell is is a step below Brian Thomas Jr. and and Xavier Worthy is is number one. I mean, number one is the production. You know, both those guys produced at a high level. Uh, and a lot of the stuff that they did translates well over to to the to the NFL. Not that uh, Adonai Mitchell can't do that, but it just wasn't on display. There were a lot of times where Mitchell went went just completely dark, you know, and disappeared in those games. And and another reason is it's it's there's just questions about the effort there with 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 Ad Mitchell, you know. Uh, when when you see it on film, when the ball's not coming his way, a lot of times he takes those plays off. Uh, he he isn't necessarily doesn't have the effort on the blocking plays. Um, and and again, he never re- he never really led his his team in a particular category. He he got did get a lot of a lot of touchdowns last year, and I will give it to him on that. When when Ad Mitchell is kept involved, you know he. he I mean, he's he's a great wide receiver, uh, and I think he has some of the best route running in this class. I'm very high on Ad Mitchell's route running, but it, it just I, I still think he's a step below, and he's just more he's just riskier than than I think Xavier Worthy and, and Brian Thomas Jr. is. If if Mitchell hits, I mean, shoot, you're looking at a really really good wide receiver and a wide receiver one in the NFL. It's just it's just that hit rate, you know. So I I think Mitchell is. The difference between Thomas and Mitchell isn't much, but I do think it's enough that that 
Thomas Jr. is probably a top a top 10 to 15 pick honestly is where I think he, he ends up going Mitchell. I think it's probably 22 to, to, to 32. You know, I still think Mitchell will end up being a first round pick, but it's the back end of the first round Thomas. I don't think he gets, he gets past very far past the Colts. if past the Colts at all. So really good question. Tune in on Monday. Cause that's when we're going to do our deep dive into ad nine Mitchell. Uh, so we'll, we'll kind of explain a lot more and go into more detail there, but, but Drake kind of just put a, to put a bow on the Brian Thomas jr. Uh, uh, talk for this evening. The big question, if he's there at 15, should the Colts draft Brian Thomas jr. In the first round at number 15 and why? If there's not a generational talent sitting there, and I, I'm going to have to keep saying this, and by generational talent, I mean three players, which only one is realistic. Marvin Harrison Jr., not happening. <laughs> Dallas Turner, sure as hell not happening. I know that me and Andrew did a, a, a mock draft where he was there. That For our mock draft for Bleach Report this week, Dallas Turner was sitting there. <laughs> and we picked him because you don't pass up. Yeah, Brock Bowers Brock talent. Bowers was gone, people. But, but Dallas Turner was sitting there at 15, and I'm thinking, you know what? Can't pass that. There's there, he's, I wouldn't say he's a generational talent, Drake, but he's a damn good pass rusher. He'd be better pass rusher than anyone on the Colts that the Colts currently have, so you got to take him there. But but yes, your, your point your points does remain valid. Yeah, and like, so then the third one is Brock Bowers. So if you don't if you don't have one of those three guys where you're like, this is just going to take us over the top in so many ways. And Brian Thomas Jr. is sitting there. It's very difficult to not say yes. And that's even if Quinion Mitchell is there. Okay. Because Brian Thomas Jr. I think makes a lot of sense for the Colts. I think that yes, him and AD Mitchell, you can kind of compare them but the blocking is there the effort is there not to say ad mitchell won't change that but you don't even have to question it with brian thomas okay a blocking wide receiver especially when they're a top 15 20 pick if they're out there blocking their ass off that is awesome that means they're not going to take anything off and you know ad mitchell has been in in some ways due to that lack of wanting to give effort he's been compared to george pickens you know so i i think that should they take him at 15 yes if those other circumstances fall through, why? I think that you're giving Anthony Richardson more weapons. I think you're also giving Anthony Richardson a guy who is explosive over the top, but can do stuff underneath. And then that's just going to open up more for the rest of your team. And like you said, if Jelani Woods is healthy, well, then you've got him, Will Mallory, Kylan Grants, and you've got a, a solid tight end room mixed with Michael Pittman Jr., Josh Downs, who is a is a is an emerging talent in the NFL. All with Shane Steichen and Reggie Wayne and Jim Bob Cooter and Cam Turner. And that just, that's a perfect fit. And I think that, I think that Brian Thomas Jr. has a lot to prove in the NFL, but I think that, boy, if you get him with Shane Steichen and Reggie Wayne, I just think that's a concoction for success. So if he's there at 15 and everything falls in line, I think they should take him. I would agree. You know, and behind Brock Bowers, Brian Thomas Jr. is my pick. Exactly. You know, and and yep. that's that's I, I I think it's a very realistic pick for for the Indianapolis Colts as well. The way the way that the Colts have been really focusing in on on wide receivers, I know everyone's talking about they need help in the secondary. And and that is true, you know. They're the especially at safety. Uh but as far as cornerback is concerned, I don't know if they go cornerback. I really think they want to be more explosive and continue to add weapons for, for Anthony Richardson. So if Brock Bowers isn't there, you know, the train's going to keep going until the train crashes probably on April 25th. Uh, but Brian Thomas Jr. for me would be an, an absolute home run for the Indianapolis Colts. You know, you're filling that Z wide receiver role. You're getting a guy that can stretch the field deep, uh, is an absolute burner. Um, a guy that, that not only is a deep threat, but he can win short to intermediate, uh, great kid, uh, fantastic athlete. And, and, and you're really rounding out your, your receiver room. He's not Alec Pierce 2.0. He has a much better skill overall skill set in way my higher opinion, ceiling way yeah. higher ceiling than alec pierce you know for, for when you look at alec pierce you don't see the wide receiver one potential you see a role-playing wide receiver 
Brian Thomas Jr., I know the Colts have Michael Pittman Jr. as their wide receiver one, quote unquote, but Brian Thomas Jr. can bring you that type of that type of production, you know, having two wide quote unquote wide receiver ones for Anthony Richardson would be huge. Look what it's done to Joe Burrow's career, having Jamar Chase and T Higgins, having Michael Pittman and Brian Thomas Jr. would be the almost the same exact thing. Just, you know, just bigger guys uh, in that aspect and, and bigger and better athletes. So yeah, if the Colts, if Brian Thomas Jr. is available there at 15 and, and Brock Bowers isn't, if I'm the Colts, I take Brian Thomas Jr. and I, I get that explosiveness to to that explosive player on my offense and get Anthony Richardson another weapon. Uh, I think that would be, like I said, an absolute home run hit, a home run pick for the Indianapolis Colts. And hell, I mean, there's even a debate if Brock Bowers is on the board there. Some people might have to take Brian Thomas Jr. instead. But uh, again, I think it would be. He fits perfectly in Indianapolis. What Shane Steichen wants to bring to this offense, uh, getting another explosive weapon for Anthony Richardson. It's it's hard to argue the pick of Brian Thomas Jr. to the Colts at number fifteen. Yes, and look at the end of the day, you 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 definitely have multiple needs on this team, but especially after that hip drop rule, that hip drop tackle rule, this is an offensive league. Okay, mm -hmm. it's an offensive league, and this league wants more offense. So you have to follow the trend. Okay, and you need the talent first and foremost at wide receiver. The Colts are really missing one weapon, and if they can have another one, <coughs> Jelani Wood stay healthy. You've got yourself some very overlooked weapons that, with Anthony Richardson, the ultimate weapon at quarterback combined, could really be a big issue. Jelani Woods, and I'm not going to lie, he's been he's been working out and posting he videos looks on, scary. on on Insta Instagram. That dude's that dude's yoked. You know, he's he's ready for a revenge season, and and hey. For 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 his sake, I hope he goes out there and he dominates. It would certainly help the Colts offense. That's for sure. Uh, Drake, let's talk about the latest Colts news and rumors. Got a couple of things to talk about before we get you guys out of here for your Easter weekend. The first one came up uh, from from Stephen Holder, uh, reported this week, and and it was I think I think took Colts fans back a little bit, but it turns out that Stephen Holder is reporting that the Colts offered more money to. Former Minnesota Vikings def, uh, pass rusher and now current pass rusher for the Houston Texans, Daniil Hunter. They offered him more money to come to Indianapolis than the Houston Texans did. And, and in the end, Hunter ended up signing with the Houston Texans. So uh, that just kind of shows, guys. I mean, the Colts did try to go out and make some get some bigger free agents. But what does Chris Ballard say all the time? You know, we can do that, but they also got to they also have to want to come here. I mean, it takes two to make a deal. And and sometimes even even going out there and paying, trying to pay more for a prospect, they either want to go home, which is with in Daniel Hunter's case, and then you also got to think about the other teams in this division. I, I want to give a shout out to Landon Oliver of the Blue Stable. Really good guy, fantastic analyst and and a good buddy of mine. He pointed this out on X and it was a very good point. Of all the teams in the AFC South, Tennessee Titans, Houston Texans, and Jacksonville, Jag Jacksonville Jaguars, and Indianapolis Colts, only the Colts are, are in a state with, with, uh, with state income tax. All the rest of them, Tennessee, Texas, and Florida, no state income tax. That is a big difference when it's talking about these, these contracts the NFL players get. And I'm talking millions of dollars. That has to play a role when these guys are looking to sign these these deals in free agency. Yeah, and you know, my God, shout out to Landon Oliver. Who the hell would think of that? You know, <laughs> who who would who in the hell would think of that in the sports world? Congratulations, Landon, for putting that out there because that's probably what it was. Okay, that's well, Matt saying three and a half percent different. Definitely, man, that's you, that's quite a bit of money. You talk about. $50 million overall on a contract, that means something. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's like Andrew said, that's at least a million dollars we're probably talking about that's a difference. So, look, I know that there – I didn't see some stuff like, oh, well, Daniil Hunter is, you know, he's he's approaching 30, blah, blah, blah. He is coming off the most sacks he's ever had in his career. He's also coming off of last season. I think he had a comeback player of the year after suffering an injury before then, Daniil Hunter would have – there's two things about this that the Colts approached him. Number one, they would have had a an absolute monster at, at, 
at defensive end. He's not the greatest, pa- uh, uh, not the greatest run defender, but the man eighty pressures last season. Okay, that's a lot. That's an insane amount of pressures. He had sixteen point five sacks. He doesn't seem to be slowing down yet. He's approaching thirty. So the Texans are getting themselves, in my opinion, far better of a replacement for Jonathan Grant or Grenard. I mean, Jonathan Grenard doesn't even sniff Neil Hunter's boots. Okay, so I think that the, that the Colts are going to have some serious competition. But at the end of the day, I also think that this says that the Colts aren't as confident in Quiddy Pay. I think that they, I think that they were going after a big time pass rusher. I do. Uh, maybe this is a hot take, Andrew, but I think that they have confidence in Dio. I think they have confidence in Samson, and I think they have confidence in the interior, especially after getting Grover back and getting Raekwon Davis. I don't. I'm going to take. I'm, I'm going to throw a prediction out there. I bet you that they don't take that fifth year option on quitting. I don't think they'll take the fifth year option, but I does. I don't think it's necessarily an indictment that Quiddy Pay is not going to be back with the team. And and I they, I still think Quiddy Pay starts. You know, I don't think Dio Dangbo has supplanted Quiddy Pay as the starter. I think it's a big year for Quiddy Pay, but I, I more think that that the Colts they saw an opportunity to land a big fish, a guy that could really juice this pass rush, and then they went out and tried to get him and and just failed. So uh, we'll we'll have to see if if that changes in the future. If Anthony Richardson could start to succeed more guys want to start coming to indianapolis just to play with anthony richardson i think that would make a difference as well kind of have like a, that cj stroud effect that the houston texans are currently enjoying uh, another another uh uh a guy that could be possibly coming back to Indianapolis, though, is Julian Blackman. So Chris Ballard uh, at the NFL owners meetings this week did confirm that the Colts have re-engaged in talks with Julian Blackman. And, and Drake, I, we talked about this before free agency started, you know, that, that if the Colts re-signed Julian Blackman, that would be such a, that'd be such a, a, a just a, a relief, I think for, for the safety room, because Blackman's coming off of a career year, that position switch from free safety to strong safety, just allowed him to take off and really feel comfortable in this defense. So you, if you look at the safety room now, Julian Blackman re-signs, you're feeling a lot more comfortable about this safety room now that you've got a a really solid, uh, strong safety in there like Julian Blackman. Yeah, and you know, I I think that if they re-sign Julian Blackman, I do think that that means that Nick Cross is probably going to be put into packages because I still think that they pick up somebody at free safety, whether that's Quandre Diggs, you know, Justin Simmons, whatever, draft, whatever. It would be huge. I think that Julian Blackman deserves to be re-signed, but it also just shows that the Colts were right. They let him walk out into free agency. He hasn't been signed yet. So they've played this beautifully, perfectly, and they're going to get him for cheap if they get him. They're just letting the market play itself out, you know, yep. and letting the market kind of dictate itself on Julian Blackman, and he still could re, uh, come back with the Indianapolis Colts. So it's definitely a situation we'll want to monitor here over the next com- over the next couple of weeks uh, to see if Blackman does return. And I think Nick Cross, if Blackman does return, Nick Cross would be your your starting free safety unless another move is made. And then finally, okay. uh, the Colts did work out another safety, but I don't know how excited you guys are going to be about it uh former broncos and texans safety kareem jackson the 35 year old safety uh has had has had a pretty long career i think he was drafted back in in 2010 so he's been in the league a while uh most notably i think he's been been known for at least the past few seasons but really most of his career for uh uh getting in trouble for illegal hits uh definitely not not the type of uh uh what is it reputation that you want to carry around the league uh but kareem jackson was brought in for a visit drake in my opinion i don't think i don't think anything comes of this i really don't think jackson gets signed and if he does dsg good bar took the words right out of my mouth can't body at best yeah you're talking about a guy who when when he does come to the colts he will be 36 years old and i actually wrote this piece you know the thing about jackson that's very interesting is he he isn't really playing like he's 36. I mean, Cam Hayward, okay, who is a cornerback, is 32. He didn't even play in 2023. So to be 36 and you're still getting considered and looked at at teams, give Kareem Jackson a little bit of credit. But like you said, two things. One, his play style of being cheap does not fit the Colts. Kareem Jackson's a cheap hitter. Okay, the Colts aren't that way. Um, I also think that, yes, while he did still have two interceptions last year with the Broncos and Texans, played for both teams, he had like 53 tackles. He did okay for a guy his age. 
what is his his price going to be as opposed to a rookie you know or 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 somebody who's maybe fresher more ready to play fits your scheme better that just hasn't had the opportunities jackson has had i think that like dsg said either a camp body or like andrew said it's just to do your your your, your duty because you don't have that designated safety you haven't re-signed blackman yet you haven't drafted anybody or signed an outside talent i think this is just doing their homework so they don't leave any stone unturned yeah i would agree but but drake getting back to kind of the 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 crux of our show tonight brian thomas jr no yeah brian you know <laughs> the 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 guy is is explosive i mean he's everything you're looking for in the modern day wide receiver uh definitely room to grow not the perfect prospect but the, the the physical tools are there you can see as far as his route running his catching ability his his yards after catch everything is there to mold this guy into a legitimate threat at the wide receiver position for years to come and hey if the colts go that route at number 15 and get anthony richardson another explosive weapon in Shane Steichen's offense I really do think that Brian Thomas Jr. could be a guy that takes this Colts offense to the next level he's got that type of potential well at the end of the day in short the quarterback fits him the coach fits him the scheme fits him everything fits Brian Thomas Jr. so it would not be a bad pick I know there's multiple ways the Colts can go but if they do land Brian Thomas Jr. I'm not going to be mad about it, and I'm sure Steichen won't either. I, I would agree. So that's our show for tonight, guys. Really appreciate everybody tuning in to talk about Brian Thomas Jr. with us and his fit with the Indianapolis Colts. Shout out to Patrick and Yim for the Super Chats this evening and everybody else that joined in live uh, to discuss these draft prospects. Uh, and if you enjoyed, make sure you go follow us on all of our socials like Horseshoe Huddle on Facebook, follow at Colts on FN on X and subscribe to the Horseshoe Huddle YouTube channel. Hit that bell so you know when Drake and I go live every Monday and Thursday night or for special breaking news episodes so you never miss us. And if you can't catch us live or on YouTube, wherever you listen to podcasts, we're on there as well. So make sure you subscribe, give us a five-star review so we can reach other Colts fans just like you. And of course, Drake and I have written content for you out on horseshoehuddle.com. Drake, tell the people what they need to go take a look at. So I've got three remaining free agents who fit the Colts, and they're all three still out there. So go check that out. Uh, uh, I believe it's Kaylin Jackson. So Jim Mercer's daughter provided an update on her dad, uh, Jim Mercer's health, mm -hmm. on the Pat McAfee show, did a little coverage on that. And then the Colts make puzzling picks in ESPN's latest mock draft, Matt Miller. Check out the horseshoe huddle so you can learn a little more about the Colts. So go check that one out too. One of the weirdest uh, mock drafts I've ever seen for a specific team in all seven rounds. Matt Miller is certainly a, certainly a guy. I, I'll leave it. He at doesn't that. watch Colts football, but that's okay. Uh, certainly a guy. Uh, but, but yeah, definitely go check those out. For me, did a deep dive into Shane Steichen's comments this week on Anthony Richardson. Guys, it's I mean Drake and I have both spoken to Shane Steichen and and spoken to him on multiple occasions it's hard to really get that man too excited and, and to re reveal much but when you start talking to Shane Steichen about Anthony Richardson and diving into the X's and O's and 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 what he is capable of doing boy Shane Steichen is excited for Anthony Richardson in 2024 and beyond he's ready to get his quarterback back so so go check that out and and all the other fantastic pieces on horseshoehuddle.com go follow Drake at D Walster Drake you can follow me at Andrew Moore NFL and we'll be back Monday night to break down Adonai Mitchell and the potential of him coming to the Indianapolis Colts why some Colts fans may be out on him uh what really stands out about AD Mitchell it's going to be another fun episode but everybody enjoy your Easter weekend hopefully you get to spend it with some good loved ones and we'll be back right here on Monday night to talk more Colts football with all of you we'll see you then